we bless the Lord for another opportunity that he has given us to be in fellowship together as one, as brothers and sisters in the Lord. And I'm grateful to God that I'm not only sharing the word I'm about to share with the people in this room right now, but even with you that is watching, that is listening to me at this very moment in time. We thank God for the way we have come to this part of the year. It has not been an easy year for so many people. Much of the year has been uh, with lockdowns, quarantine, people losing their jobs, others getting new jobs, people changing business, changing lifestyle. But guess what? We are about to get to the end of the year and God is still good. God is still on the throne. God still reigns. And we are at a time where we need a lot of prayer. At least from my motherland here in Uganda, we need a lot of prayers right now. Everybody needs to be praying for our country. Everybody needs to be praying for the will of God to be done at such a time as this. Child of God, do not think that it is the intercessors that are designated, that have titles, that are supposed to be praying for our country right now. Don't wait for anything to be so bad so that you begin to say, now we need to pray. Start to pray now. Make it your daily routine to pray for the nation. Don't only pray for the things that you need as an individual, but pray for this country. Pray for our motherland. Pray that the peace of God shall prevail in Jesus' mighty name. Well, today I would like to get into the word. And the title of my message today is God Pleasers. God Pleasers. Let us get to Galatians chapter 1, when we shall read verse 10. And that's where we're going to start from, and you'll understand what I mean when I talk about God pleases. The Bible says here, these are the words of Apostle Paul in Galatians 1.10. He says, For am I now seeking the approval of men or of God? Or am I trying to please man? If I were still trying to please man, I would not be a servant of Christ. Listen to those words. So he's talking about two different people here. He's talking about men pleasers and God pleasers. There are people who work a lot to make sure that they can please men, to make sure they please people. And there are those who are determined to make sure they please God. Many a time you realize that you can't please both at the same time. You either choose to live a life which pleases God or you live a life that pleases man. The moment you try to do both, you're going to end up in a compromised position and you will never make it. You have to be able to do one of the two at a given moment. And you cannot say, I'm winning the approval of men and I'm uh, winning the approval of God. Probably sometimes people will love you or they will feel you are approved because you are doing what God wants and then God grants you favor before them, but not because you are doing exactly what they want. That's the only way you can win the approval of men, but you don't work for that. So Apostle Paul here is talking to the Galatians and is saying, what should I do? Do you want me to be approved of men or do you want me to be approved of God? You need to know which approval you are working for. Do you want to be approved of men or do you want to be approved of God? You need to make a decision. If you have not made that decision yet, it is one critical decision that you must make. Because as the Bible tells us that friendship with the world is an enmity with God. You have to choose which friend you're going to take. You're either a friend to God and an enemy to the world, or you are a friend to the world and an enemy to God. You have to choose which side you fall onto. The lines were drawn. I've ever preached that message to you. If you don't know about that message, make sure you look it up on Facebook or on YouTube. The lines were drawn. You cannot be on both ends. You have to choose where you belong. So Paul here is saying, if I'm to seek the approval of men, then I cannot be a servant of Christ. You have to understand that child of God. And it's one of the greatest problems we have in our generation today. People are trying to please both. They are trying to have the kind of church which pleases God, but at the same time will be approved of men. You have to choose which kind of church you're going to be. You are either a church that is approved of God or a church that is approved of the world. Of course, the one that is approved of the world is the one that will do worldly things in order to please the people of the world. It is the one that will have to compromise so that when people from the world come, they feel comfortable there. And I'm not saying that a church that is seeking God's approval is one whereby people should resent it if they are sinners. No, but the sinner must feel uncomfortable because of their sin and seek the comfort of Christ when they come to church. 
But as long as a sinner can come and feel comfortable with their sin and go back with their sin and still come back because that church is cool, then that is a church that is looking for the approval of men, not the approval of God. Some preachers have tried to cover both, to preach a message that can be approved of men as relevant, as good, as cool, and at the same time to be approved of God. You cannot do both. And that's why Apostle Paul here is saying, if I were still trying to please man, I would not be a servant of Christ. So I'm going to talk to people that are like Apostle Paul, who are saying we are not going to seek the approval of men, but we are going to seek the approval of God. People who are saying we are not working to please anybody apart from God. Not people pleasers, but God pleasers. Hallelujah. And if you're going to be a God pleaser, what are you supposed to do in order to be pleasing to God? What are you supposed to be like if you're going to be a God pleaser? Those are the things that I'm going to talk about today. And what are the advantages of making sure you live a life that is pleasing unto God? I'll hint about that as I'm ending the message today. I want us to get to Romans chapter 8, from verse 5 to 8. This is what he says. He says, for to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal kind of mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then, they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Did you hear what verse 8 says? So then, they that are in the flesh cannot please God. So child of God, you have to understand that in order to be pleasing to God, in order to be a God pleaser, you have to be spiritually minded. You cannot be walking in the flesh. You cannot be carnally minded. And then you think you are going to be a God pleaser. If you want to be a God pleaser, you must be somebody that walks in the spirit. Someone that functions in the spirit. Someone that is tuned to the spirit of God and the will of God. You have to be the kind of person that is determined to live the ways of the world. To live the ways of the flesh. You cannot be walking in fornication, in drunkenness, in adultery, in all kinds of sexual immorality, in stealing, in killing, and you think you're going to be able to please God. Do not be deceived. Because some people are told, it doesn't matter what you do. The grace of God has covered you, so whatever you do is just in the flesh, but in the spirit, you are one with Jesus. No, the man says here, as long as you are walking in the flesh, as long as you are carnally minded, you cannot please God. So you cannot count yourself among the God pleasers. Pleasing God is something we do intentionally. You have to decide and say, I'm going to please God. And so you choose to walk by the Spirit. You, you choose to seek after the things of the Spirit. Because it says, those that are carnal cannot please God. And then in Hebrews chapter 11, 5 to 6, he says, By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. Verse 6 then says, But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Two things I want to talk about here. He starts by talking about Enoch. And we know about Enoch right away from Genesis chapter 5. This is a man that lived such a peculiar life. A man that never saw death according to what the scriptures show us. Because the Bible says God just took him. Here he says he translated him. In other words, he moved him from this realm to the spiritual realm just by translation. He just changed address. The Bible says this man walked in faith and he was a man of faith. And the Bible tells us this was the testimony that was known of him even before his translation. Before he went out of this world, in other words. Before God took him out of this world, he had this testimony. And what was the testimony? The testimony was that he pleased God. Child of God, what is your testimony? Can people look at you and they say, that man has pleased God? Can they look at you and they testify, that woman has sought God. She loves God. She hates offending God. Everything about her is God. I want to please God. I want to serve God. This was the testimony that was known of Enoch. 
even before he was translated out of this life. And that is the same testimony by which God was pleased. The Bible tells us he pleased God. In other words, it is perceivable by men that you are a God pleaser. People can tell that you are a person who is after pleasing God. People can also have that testimony about you, that you are a person who is after the will of God, who is after serving God with the best that you have. Is that the testimony that people will have about you when you are translated out of this life, when you eventually come out of this life? Will that be the testimony that the angels will have about you? Will that be the testimony that people will have about you that you've left behind? I pray that that will be your testimony, child of God. That just like Enoch, you'll be the kind of person with the testimony that you pleased God in your entire lifetime in Jesus' name. And then he says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. What does that mean? It means you cannot please God or you cannot be a God pleaser if you do not walk in faith. In other words, for us to be God pleasers, we must live by faith. Amen. You cannot live by sight and you please God. Because when you live by sight, you are going to always be complaining, you are going to be grumbling, you are going to be seeing things according to the kind of perspective. You cannot say you are a person of unbelief, but for you, you, you know how to please God. No, he mentions it clearly here. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. So you must be the kind of person that walks in faith, that lives by faith. And that's why in Hebrews 10, 38, he says that now the just shall live by faith. He's talking about the just. He's talking about the righteous ones of God. You inclusive as long as you are born again. He says the just shall live by faith. And then he says this, but if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. In other words, my soul shall not be pleased with him. These are the words of God himself. He says they just shall live by faith. In other words, if you're going to be a God pleaser, you must live by faith. And at the same time, faith does not go backward. He shows us here that they just are people that keep moving forward. They press on to the prize of the high calling. They keep forging their way forward. They do not turn back. He says that when you draw back, it means you are not walking in faith. You cannot walk in faith by going backwards. The faith drive or the faith vehicle in us does not have a reverse gear. Faith only moves forward. So you have to understand that God is pleased if you are the kind of person that never turns back. If you are the kind of person that only forges forward, you refuse to go backward. You refuse to draw back because the moment you give up, the moment you quit, the moment you draw back, you are grieving the spirit of God. He expects you to keep moving forward regardless of how hard it is, regardless of how painful it is. He expects you to keep moving forward. He says if you draw back, his soul shall not be pleased in you. He will have no pleasure in you. But if you want God to have pleasure in you, be the kind of person that lives by faith, knowing that faith never draws back. Faith only keeps moving forward. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hebrews 13, 16 is another verse I would like us to read. Hebrews 13, verse 16. He says, But to do good and to share, forget not. For with such sacrifices, God is well pleased. You have to understand that another thing that makes our God pleased with us are the sacrifices that we make. The goodness that we show to others. The generosity of our hearts. If you are going to be a God pleaser, you have to be somebody that has given their lives to doing good and to generosity. You have to make sure you are generous and you have to make sure that you are doing a lot of good. Never think that it is just a good humanitarian act. No, I want you to know that whenever you do good, you are pleasing God. Whenever you make those sacrifices, as you feed the hungry, as you help the poor, as you give to the work of the Lord most importantly, to the work of preaching the gospel, that sacrifice is God-pleasing. He says, with that, for with such sacrifices, God is well-pleased. Not even just pleased, but well-pleased. So if you're going to be a God-pleaser, you must be a generous person. Stingy people offend God. He doesn't like stinginess and selfishness. God doesn't want self-centeredness. God is a God of generosity. And whenever he sees somebody that is so generous, it pleases his heart. He is well pleased. So, if you have been giving to God, 
and probably you didn't know whether you are doing good or not the scripture is right there hebrews 13 16 it tells you that with your sacrifices with your giving with your offerings with your tithes god is well pleased child of god so do not give up on doing good do not give up on your generosity because that makes you a god pleaser hallelujah and I'm not saying that when, when you do good works, then all of a sudden you receive salvation. No, it is one thing to receive salvation and it is another thing to be pleasing unto God. So we are not saying that when you do a lot of good works, heaven is yours. Or when you do a lot of good works, then you automatically save. No, we are talking about pleasing God. And sometimes it is through pleasing God that even the heathens attract the attention of God. Just like we see Cornelius. He was a good man. But a religious man, he was not saved. But he was doing a lot of good. He was generous even to the poor. And because of that, it pleased God. And what did God do? He didn't say because you have done a lot of good works, now you have attained salvation. What happened was, God was well pleased because of this man's generosity and good works. And he sent an angel to him. And after that, he sent Peter to him. And they preached that gospel to him and to his entire household. And because of that, they became saved. They received Jesus Christ in their lives. So you can see that even with the heathens, God is well pleased with their good works. And because of that, they attract his attention to draw them to salvation. First John chapter 3 and verse 22 is another scripture I want us to read. First John chapter 3 and verse 22. He says, and whatsoever we ask, we receive of him. Because we keep his commandments, and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. Now, I would want to make this point here. That doing what pleases God makes your prayers more fruitful. Hallelujah. Amen. That's one of the simple revelations that we can get from this verse. He says, whatsoever we ask, we receive of him. Why? Because we keep his commandments and we do those things that are pleasing in his sight. In other words, if you are the kind of person that does the things that please God, that are pleasing in his sight, it simplifies your prayer life because you will easily receive whatsoever you ask of him. So if you didn't think there is a benefit of doing things that please God, if you thought it was one way, I want to correct that perception for you. When you do the things that are pleasing in God's sight, it attracts his attention to your petitions. That is what this man is saying here. That we easily get whatever we ask of him because we do the things that are pleasing in his sight. Child of God, I want to encourage you to do the things that are pleasing in God's sight. There is always a lot of pressure to please men because they might abuse you if you don't do what they want. They might not like you if you don't do what they want. They might even chase you off your job if you don't do what they want. If you don't please them, if you don't please their egos, if you don't uh, do what they think must be done, they might even kick you out of school. But I want to, uh, to encourage you, do not try to please human beings, not even any of them. If they are pleased with what you do, let it be a by the way. But let your attention be about pleasing God. Let all your effort be about wanting to please God. Do not try to sing for the world, sing for God. Do not try to do something that will make the world like you so that they can buy your products. If you are not pleasing God by doing so, you are chasing the wrong agenda. Do not try to do something that is in between. I've seen so many businesses try to compromise because they are trying to be Christian, but at the same time, they don't want to chase away their customers. You'd rather chase away the customers and remain a servant of Christ. But when you know, all you are seeking is the approval of God. Amen. Even if people do not want to vote you, if you are a politician, if you are into politics, so you are trying to get a leadership post, do not try to get the approval of men. Because if God wants you in that position, he will get you to that position without compromise. Do not try to bring the standard down. Do not try to be cheap. Do not try to make God useless in your life because you are trying to get the approval of men. You would rather lose before men. You would rather stand like Daniel. You would rather stand like Mesut, Abednego, Shadrach. And you say, we are not going to please the king. We are not going to please any human being and then ashamed our God. We are not going to bow down to this image. We are not going to do anything that will grieve the spirit of our God. That is the kind of stance that you need to take, child of God. You need to take that kind of position and you say, I will please God. I'm not going to please man. That is how you keep your integrity as a servant of God. That is how you keep your integrity as a Christian. Stand tall. And in these hard times, 
choose to please God and not man in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. That is your word for today. Very simple but very powerful. Make sure that you choose to be a God pleaser in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Now I would like us to pray in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you for all of us that are in this place. And I thank you for everyone out there that has just listened to this message. I pray for all of us that we shall not be people pleasers, but we shall be God pleasers in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray for everyone that was about to compromise. My Father, in the name of Jesus, may you grant them the boldness to stand tall and say, we are not going to please men. I am not going to please man. I'm not going to try to please my father. I'm not going to try to please my mother at the expense of grieving the spirit of the living God. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray that you receive that boldness. Those people that are trying to please their bosses as they compromise, as they put the wrong figures, I pray in the name of Jesus that they will stand and say, I am a God pleaser. I'm not a man pleaser. I am not going to try to do the wrong thing because my boss will be angry. In the name of Jesus, I pray that they will do the right thing. Let them offend their bosses if need be, but let them be pleasing in the sight of God. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray for all of us that are listening to this message that you grant us that boldness to stand like those men, like Peter and John, that when they stood and they said, whether it be right before you to please you and deny God, you decide. But we choose to stand for God. We shall not refuse to speak what we had and what we saw. We shall not refuse to proclaim the gospel of God. I pray for the pastors. I pray for the ministers of the gospel that they will choose to stand for God. They will not try to please the government. They will not try to please their chairman of the villages. They will not try to please men. They will not try to please the religious leaders. They will not try to please the community. But they will stand for God in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, Rabaka Shetelelebo Rinda Katalama Sataya. May the boldness of God fall upon you. May the boldness of God fall upon you. May the grace to stand your ground be upon you in the mighty name of Jesus. And to you who has done things that are pleasing to God, you God pleasers that have lived a life that is pleasing in the sight of God, I pray that whatsoever you ask shall come quickly to you, shall come speedily to you. According to 1 John 3.22, let it come speedily to you that whatsoever you ask, you receive of him right now. Even that which are delayed, I pray it shall come forth in the mighty name of Jesus. May the hand of God be upon you. May the glory of God be upon you. May you receive of the Holy Spirit in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Father, we give you the praise, we give you the glory, and we give you the honor. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Mantele broko shi telele boko sata ya baba. Reko si tele brakata ya ndelele bosaya. Thank you, King of Glory. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That is your word for today. That's your message for the child of God. And in case you are watching or listening and you'd like to reach out to us, you want to give your offerings, your tithes, a special seed, or you would like somebody to pray with you, or you'd like to give your life to Jesus, or you're a backslider and you want to return to God, you want to give us feedback about this message, the number is 0702-230-201. And if you're outside Uganda, that is plus 256 702-230-201. May the good Lord bless you. Make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel, Apostle Henry Sabiti, and make sure you recommend it to other people and uh, share the message, share the gospel. Do not be lazy in sharing the gospel. People always share things on WhatsApp, on Facebook, on YouTube, many things. People are sharing things left, right, and center on so many apps. If people are sharing comedy skits, people are sharing uh, about politics, people are sharing about their religion. What are you doing? Make sure you make the internet busy. Share these messages. Share the gospel. Share the uncorrupted, undiluted word of God in Jesus' mighty name. May the good Lord bless you. Until next time, I pray that the grace of God, that the hand of God shall reign upon your life in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. and amen.